I've had you guys asking about it, and I was excited to finally get those operating. Hey guys, it's Mike here, and welcome back to the main track. Hope you're having an awesome summer and we're finding some shade and ability to stay cool out there. I'm having a pretty good one here myself, uh, just wrapping up a very nice summer vacation. Uh, I've been able to accomplish three things. Uh, number one, I was able to go on a very nice vacation to Gatlinburg, Tennessee and North Carolina. Uh, just now uh, unpacking from that, in fact. I was able to grow out a little bit of a beard right here, which I'm liking. And number three, I was able to uh, tackle a project here in the layout that a lot of you guys have been asking about here in recent weeks. You may recall a little while ago I had an episode where I installed these We Honest Crossing signals. Well, they look pretty good, but all this time they've stayed dark. That's because I've been waiting on the circuit board to get over here. Now, because of supply chain issues, it took a long time for those to get here. Uh, they finally arrived here at my house, but by that point I was tackling a lot of other projects here in the layout and kept putting that off. And so with my extra vacation days, I decided it was time to tackle that project, get those signals wired up, turn them on, and see how they went. And I tell you, I'm pretty impressed so far. I wanted to make this quick update video to show you how I installed those and got those up and going. All right, now when you order products from We Honest, you're going to notice most of your packages come pretty simply. Uh, this came in a bubble envelope, really small, and I was sitting there wondering how in the world were they going to get all the pieces in this little box, but I opened it up and uh, this is what I got. So what you're going to find is the circuit board. And we'll take this out, give you a look right there. I was really pleased that everything came assembled on this plexiglass backing. You're going to notice a lack of instructions. All we have in there is the uh, business card from David of We Honest. And you can see uh, this looks pretty complex, but we're going to go ahead and uh, dig right in and see exactly how we need to wire the signals to this and wire these into the layout. I wanted to thank Jim Orlando, one of our subscribers, for uh, sending me a diagram and some photos of how he wired his signals. In addition to the circuit board, what you're going to find are the sensors. These are what are going to go between our rails that the uh, trains will pass over to activate these signals. I'll be honest, those sensor heads are kind of large, so we're going to have to do something to uh, hide those, make them more discreet on the layout so they're not sticking out. I realize with the sizing there, that may be impossible to completely hide, but we're going to do some tricks to see what we can do with that. And uh, obviously there are two sensors, one for each side of your crossing, depending upon your direction. When your train passes over one of those, it'll activate the signal. And when it passes over the second one, it will deactivate that. So two sensors right there. And as for the signals themselves, I've already featured those uh, on some of my other episodes when I installed those, waiting for the circuit board. Simply have the uh, three diodes on the bottom, which will plug into the circuit board right there. One thing you're going to notice is a lack of a power supply. You're going to need a DC adapter right there. That is one thing that uh, does not come with this that you're going to have to find. That wasn't too hard for me. I mean, in this day and age, you've got all kinds of electronics lying around the house. Uh, it seems like every time I throw away an old product that I don't need anymore, I end up keeping the adapters because I think, well, you never know when you're going to need those. I think this came from an old internet modem I had. Again, look for one of those lying around the house. You can also pick those up at any kind of hobby supply store. What I'm going to do is before I plug everything in, and I get everything drilled and installed. I'm going to put this on a piece of paper and uh, kind of do some drawings just so I know exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to hooking these up. I will go ahead and uh, show you here. This right here is the power adapter that I mentioned that uh, simply connects just like any electrical accessory you have. Pretty easy. These sensors, as I showed you, they're going to go on the track to detect the train coming and going. Sensor number one, I have that hooked into this connector. Sensor number two, as you see right there, just pops in there. They provide enough connections here to power up to four signals. Uh, you can put two here and then an additional third and fourth one on these connections. As you've seen on my layout, I have four signals for the intersection, so that's why I need to wire all four of these. But if you just have two signals and you get this circuit board, uh, you can simply use any combination for those two. Now, there's going to be a lot of uh, connections that we don't use. We Honest provides those for you if you're going to be installing things like gates to work with your signals and they also uh, put out a speaker with crossing signal sounds so you can hook all those up together so you have the crossings with the flashing lights the gates and the um, bell sound if you do get the gates and the bell um, you'll be able to find those instructions 
on We Honest's listings on eBay and also on its website to kind of figure that out. That may be something we cover in a future episode if I get to one of those types of crossings, but uh, don't necessarily need to do that currently. One thing that we're going to need to adjust likely later is the flashing rate. That right there allows the speed of the blinking back and forth. There's also a dimmer. All right, well, wiring up that circuit board was only part of the fun. Uh, the second thing that's going to take some time to do is installing the sensors. Those go underneath the track, and they are photo sensors. Basically, what will happen is the train rolls over those. Uh, it will activate the crossing signals, and you'll need those on either side of the crossing. And what I would suggest, uh, lesson learned here, is to install these sensors before you balance your track, if that's at all possible. Uh, obviously, I balanced my track first of all, so I had to go back. What I did is I cut out the ties. I had to drill a hole down through my layout, and then I uh, popped that sensor up through there, replaced the ties. Once I get the uh, ballast right in there, I'm going to be covering that up. Of course, you're still going to see uh, the two eyes there, but it's going to blend in quite well. The sensor casing was black and so I went ahead and I painted that a gray color therefore whenever I put the ballast in there uh, and covered that up that black is not going to show through that gray color will help it to blend in quite a bit so uh, this right here is uh, simply where I was thinking I was going to put that sensor originally I pulled that tie out and then I realized well I need to move that back just a little bit to provide more space uh, for my trains to activate that so uh, that is why you see the ballast removed. This sensor right here will activate the crossing signals here at my uh, intersection grade crossing of uh, 16th Street and Ohio Avenue. Coming over here, pretty much did the exact same thing. I cut those ties out right there, drilled the hole down, popped that sensor right back up, replaced the ties, and that sensor is up against those bottoms of the ties. All right, so I've got a train running right now, and I'm going to do a demonstration of the activation of these grade crossing signals. The main point of this video right now is just to simply show you uh, how these things work. As you can see right now, everything is uh, turned off, waiting for the train to arrive. And again, right there, you can see where the ties are removed. That is where the sensor is at. Once the uh, train hits those sensors, that activates the crossing signals here. Now there are two different settings for the brightness on these crossing signals. The original uh, default is pretty bright, uh, which isn't a bad thing, especially if you've got pretty bright lighting in your layout room like I have. I went ahead and turned that uh, brightness down a little bit, and you can still see it pretty well. That default bright setting is uh, kind of blinding, definitely not prototypical, but I went ahead and uh, toned those down just a little bit. The only thing I'm trying to figure out now is the time delay on this. You see uh, that last hopper car right there is getting ready to uh, roll across that sensor right there. And as you can see, signals are still activated. So there is some sort of setting on that circuit board that allows the signals to continue flashing for a few seconds after that uh, sensor has been passed over. I've got to figure that out. Um, you see my train is rolling down the track and those signals are still activated and they finally went off so i'm going to figure those settings out should be pretty easy but once again a lot of these things with these viana signals without those uh, detailed instructions are kind of trial and error for the most part and since these are operated by photo cells if you're doing some switching and just kind of stopping and going back and forth as long as the train is occupying that area your signals will continue flashing my final verdict on these signals and the operation here with the circuit board honestly i'm kind of impressed with this I've had no problems with the signals operating, with the lights flashing. Uh, they're nice and bright. I'm really liking how they operate. This, of course, is just one of many circuit boards for crossing signals. I've had a lot of you guys asking about other ones out there. Uh, that's certainly something I can take a look at in coming episodes. This is just one of a few crossings here in the Sedalia subdivision that are going to need grade crossing protection. So it's very likely that uh, when it comes time for the next crossing, I can use some of those other manufacturers and see what they're made out of 
and give them a comparison to these We Honest signals. But my honest opinion on these signals right here, liking them a lot. And with that, my little summer vacation is quickly coming to an end. Of course, it always stinks when that happens, but I did get those three main things accomplished. Got the crossing signals out of the way. I got my trip to Tennessee and North Carolina wrapped up. Got a really awesome video of a cool excursion train trip I went on, so I'm looking forward to bringing you that sometime in the coming weeks. Very last thing on the agenda is heading in and shaving off this beard before I head off to the day job and the boss gets wind of it. We'll look forward to seeing you next time right here on the main track.